I chose the 40, like basically strongest birds. Um, I chose the ones with the fullest crops and the most feathers. Cause they're all starting to get feathers on their back, but I needed to give the other birds some space. Our brooder it's looking like is not actually big enough for all these birds, which I was worried might happen. So at least by the next batch, I'll know that I need to have a, several more square feet to accommodate them. And it's just, as I've said before, there are some that are thriving, which are these ones. And there are some that are just surviving. So I wanted to give them a little extra space to try to catch back up so we don't have any more loss. Which is just a disappointment when that happens. But these birds are prone to that. So we're trying to fix any problems that we have, which the spacing requirement, I think we've we just pushed it a little bit too far. So it's fine. Just a learning experience. I've never ran this many birds at once, so... My batches were always much smaller, more like 50 to 75, so. Um, it is okay, everyone's doing fine, so we're just gonna try to transition these guys out here a little bit early because we're at two weeks, they're almost fully feathered. I might try to keep them out here in one of these sections and get some heat lamps out here for them. We will see. But for now, it gives them some time out here to get in the sun and it gives everybody in there more of a chance to eat and spread out a little. The first lady beetle sighting of the year. She landed on this bright pink pack and play, probably thinking it's flowers, but it's not. I want to put this away, but now she's there and I don't want her to be upset, so. Stay, stay as long as you need. Um, of, of birds between what we've sold and what we haven't so it was kind of a risk to do that to do that but I think that it is better for the health of the birds long, um, long term so I'm glad that I did it you can't tell me that this isn't the most like ghetto rigged chicken situation probably not the probably not the most ghetto I've ever had but when you have an intuitive feeling, a gut feeling that you need to go with it, you just go with it and you create whatever you can. 
So, chicken greenhouse seems to have worked out perfectly. I will say that the reason why it's so, oh gosh, my hair. The reason why it's so like boarded down is because of the wind. We have some crazy, crazy wind here, guys. And that was my stress is that we had a wind advisory, but the birds need to go out. It's warm enough for them to be out. They're big enough to be out, but that wind will slay them. <laughs> so I was like, what the heck are we gonna do? Um, so Spencer, of course, like put as much stuff on it as possible, get all of the slack out of the plastic. Cause he said, if the plastic starts to like whip at all, then that's how stuff just like, boof, you know? So it worked. And now I'm going to throw some food in here for them. Hello babies. You did it. You guys freaking did it. I'm so proud of you. Now I'm gonna reward you. It looks like they spent time over here all night eating their food, because they left them a bunch of food over here. And then just putting it on the ground, yes. Chickens don't care. They would probably, they would honestly prefer their food on the ground. Chickens are always throwing their food on the ground. It's just what they do. Come on, babies. Come eat. Come on. Wow, it is decently warm in here. That is so cool. All right, guys, I'll be back. So, cool thing about Chicken Greenhouse is that there's several people that I know, homesteaders, that keep their chickens in greenhouses during the winter, like they overwinter them in there. How cool is that? Um, so I, I saw, I've seen a lot of people doing that. Um, I think it's super cool because like it gives your greenhouse a purpose in the wintertime when you wouldn't normally be using it for anything. And they create their own heat in there. And then with the sun, oh look, the sun's coming up, guys. Oh, I'm so stoked that I got out here for it. Um, so Justin Rhodes, he has like a big um, high tunnel, like a high wall, high tunnel, high side wall, high tunnel or whatever. And they keep their whole chicken flock in there over the wintertime. And I think that's just the coolest way to do that. And I would love to do that um, eventually once we get to that stage. But I figured I might as well just like simulate it with my chickens in this way. Um, I do actually want to make some greenhouse like fr plastic frames for my um, raised beds too because I have a ton of greenhouse plastic yet left. I mean, I still have all of it. I just need to, I'm using it for chickens right now, so I need to get it back from them. Um, so today, I think I might move this little situation down to the next set of um, raised beds because I am going to use wood mulch to fill in all the pathways just between those raised beds. Firstly, because there's chickens all over it and chickens equals poop. Um, and then I think that would make the pathways really nice because managing the grass and weeds in between these pathways is just kind of irritating. If I just only had to do it around the outside perimeter of all of the raised beds, that would be easier. And then I can have some pretty maple mulch pathways in between those four. So I think that's what I'm probably gonna do, especially because now that there's like um, a bunch of poop in there. So for those of you that don't know, chickens do most of their pooping when they're sleeping. A sleeping chicken is a pooping chicken and they just poop a lot when they're sleeping. The sun is so beautiful. Um, and here's these guys. They're doing so much better, so much better. Oh, I was a stressed out chicken mama there for a few minutes. Not a few minutes, hours. <laughs> hours and hours of stressed out chicken mama. So, um, I just had to act on it. When I, I try to do a lot of this really intuitively. Um, I listen to my gut, and my gut was telling me, you need to get some of these birds out of here. This is too small. Um, the bigger birds, they're fine, they're thriving.
So I cleared everything that was kind of yucky old root veggies and things out of this bed. Uncovered, I'm pretty sure those are leaf beet. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm not 100% positive. I'll have to look back at other stuff, previous videos. Looks like leeks. That looks like a leek to me that might have overwintered. Um, but yeah, so we have some greens that already showed up, which is super cool. Um, I threw all this down here and you can see, look, a chicken being a chicken. Yay, chickens being chickens. They're like, oh, you just ripped out nasty stuff from the garden bed. Mm, we like you that. Um, I'm kind of having an idea that I might want to staple greenhouse plastic over this raised bed so that I can put some trays of seed starts out here um, and also protect these greens. I don't know, kind of an idea, we'll see.